In this video, you will learn to define theoretical yield, actual yield, and percent yield, and then you'll see an example problem of how to apply this in a homework problem using stoichiometry with a BCA table. Theoretical yield is, well yield in general, is talking about how much product is produced in a chemical reaction. Just in general, yield means something that you get um, at the end of a process. The theoretical yield is always going to be calculated from the amount of reactant that was used in the process, and we are going to assume that all reactant forms product, that nothing else happens, nothing's spilled, nothing's destroyed, nothing goes imperfectly. So theoretical yield in a perfect world, according to our math, this is how much product you should make. Now, the real world doesn't work that way. In actuality, you usually obtain a little bit less. Maybe there's a spill, maybe there's a mistake, maybe not every single gram of the reactant reacts to form product. So the actual yield is in the lab or the factory, it's how much product is actually collected at the end of the process. Once you have identified the theoretical and actual yield in your problem, the percent yield is the ratio of the actual yield to the theoretical yield expressed as a percent. So it's how much you actually get divided by your theoretical yield times 100%. You can really think about it the same way you could, would calculate a grade on a test. The actual points that you got divided by the total number of points that would be possible if you got a perfect score on the test. You, that's how you would calculate your test percentage. It's also how you would calculate the percent yield for a process. So the first, when you're approaching a problem and you're going to be asked about percent yield, the problem starts out just like it normally would. So in this problem, we're told that 28 moles of nitrogen react. And when it's asking us how many grams of NH3 are produced, it's really just asking us what is the theoretical yield, because yield is usually expressed in grams. And so if it's asking us for the mass you're expecting to get of the product, that's really just the theoretical yield. That's what it's called. So 28 grams of nitrogen react. We're going to say, assume that we have excess hydrogen. You never have any product to begin with. I didn't have to do anything with that 28 because it's already in moles, and you always want to use units of moles in the BCA table. We're going to use our mole ratios to figure out the math, the moles of the other product that should react. So for every one mole of nitrogen that reacts, we have three times as much hydrogen that reacts. So I need three times as many moles of hydrogen as nitrogen. That means we would need 84 moles of hydrogen. And we'll use the mole ratio of nitrogen to ammonia to say for every one mole of nitrogen that reacts, we need two moles of ammonia. So if 28 moles of nitrogen react, then we would need twice as many moles of NH3, which would be 56 moles. And I'm using the plus sign here to indicate that I'm creating product. So if we started with no NH3 and we've created 56 moles, we end up with 56 moles. We will also have some leftover hydrogen but that's not really our concern here. We're just gonna write it there for bookkeeping purposes. But theoretical yield is usually expressed in grams and any numbers in a BCA table are in units of moles. So we're gonna off to the side here, take the 56 moles of NH3 and we're gonna use the molar mass of NH3. We'll put one mole on the bottom to cancel out units. The molar mass of NH3 is about 17 grams. So if we have 56 moles, and every mole has 17 grams in it, we get a mass of 952 grams of NH3. So that is our theoretical yield. We're just giving it an official name now before we just were answering the question, but it's called the theoretical yield because in a perfect world, if all 28 moles of N2 that we started with actually react to form product and we collect every single gram of it, this is how much NH3 we should make. 
so we've already been practicing some problems with BCA tables and grams and moles. The only thing we're adding now is this last step, where in the problem somewhere, you will see a number like this. If only 887 grams of ammonia were actually produced. There's always going to be some hint like this much was measured in the laboratory or this much was collected. That's a big hint that this number, this 887 grams, this is our actual yield how much was collected in the real world. So that the tough part is identifying the actual yield and the theoretical yield. Most students, once they figure that out, don't have any problem. We actually collected 887 grams. In theory, our calculation said we should have made 952 grams of ammonia from the 28 moles of nitrogen we started with. And I'm going to express that as a percent. So. You can either think about multiplying that by 100% or moving the decimal over two times, whatever way, method you like for converting something to a percentage. And so you would get 93.2%. This we call our percent yield. So that's really all there is to figuring out percent yield. You just have to be careful that if you're given in a problem an amount of product and an amount of reactant, make sure the amount of product is often likely going to be the actual yield because if we're not doing a lab the only way you can know the actual yield is if you're told that in the problem if you're doing a lab like we did with this um, silver nitrate and copper wire then the actual yield would be whatever amount of product you actually measured in the lab